actually like after the photographer. So he kept doing this one, he kept going, you, you. And she, and she kept going, yes, more eyebrows, yes, more eyebrows. And I felt like I was like the third wheel. <laughs> Which is why that photo was me in the background going, fuck this shit. I'm not used to being like in the background. Like this bitch is in a background girl. She's at the front. Anyway, Brad, it's your turn. I'm gonna stop talking, everyone. Brad, start, everybody! <laughs> I had a Santa sack and I caught a bus from Palmerston. If you see three kids with a red sack, fucking call me, right? Um, I handed up for the NT News. It's not very often I get a lot of attention. Usually it's the wrong kind of attention. But um, it was fun. But anyway, I, I had a thought about this bad Santa thing. And I was trying to relate, you know, you got all the bad family stories. And one thing that stuck in my head was a Christmas carol with um, Santa's coming to town. And it was um, the lines about how he, he knows when you are sleeping and he knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. I'm pretty sure an ex-girlfriend put that on in a, in one of those um, stay the fuck away from me things from the courts. But Santa Claus, I believe, is just creepy as fuck and a control measure. You get any kid between now and the 25th of December in a shopping centre going, Mom! Mom! It's got buttons and lights and shit and I fucking want it! Your parents guarantee will say, Billy, if you behave yourself, Santa might bring it to you. For the next month, if you are a parent, you can use that one word, Santa. Actually, two words. Santa might. And you will win any argument. It's better than saying, if you behave, you might get some candy on the way out. Because the kids will fucking pick you up on that. The best part about Santa might is that if Santa doesn't, it's because Santa thought you were a bad boy. It doesn't come back to the parents at all. But it used to be told to me, oh Bradley behave, if you don't behave Santa's not going to bring you something. Bradley if you don't take your hand off your sister's head and let her up for air, you're not going to get a fucking present. You know, it's... There's so many fucking things about Christmas giving the shit. Bad fucking... Relatives, we come to Darwin to escape the cunts. Why the fuck are we going to fly back to South Australia to visit them? You go down there and you've got grandma at this street and you've got fucking grandpa up on that street and they both want to see you because you, you're away all the time. Well, fucking newsflash, planes go in both fucking directions. Right? Cyclone, the reason we have cyclone warnings to go fucking nationals is to scare the cunts away so they don't fucking come in for Christmas. Even when the fucking tourist season is on, because we want to come up here and spend all the money in the pubs and the parks and everywhere else and boost the economy. But in the wet season, you know, we just, it's our time to enjoy the pubs and all the air conditioning and, and, and make this mysterious place our own and, and get our nuts out. I did this especially for Uncle Creepy Uncle Ron in the corner because I think he's that old. His balls are probably hanging about as low as well. But he's just ducked out. I was playing it the whole fucking night. I want for Christmas him to come back so I can heckle him. Because <laughs> he heckled all my friends. <laughs> I don't have many friends, so now I have to stand out for like two people. <laughs> but, I wasn't talking about you. You can't even feel your top. I'd have a better time filling that top out. <laughs> I, I have to be careful, the girls in my office at work get jealous because I've got bigger tits than them. I walk in after button my shirt up just in case they want to have a peek, you know. I might shave them one night and go out to the town so I can pick up. I might find a lesbian and surprise the bitch. <laughs> It'd be like a back alley in Barbie where you think you've got this hot chick and all of a sudden she stands up and sucking your dick and, you're in and she goes, your turn. <laughs> I was totally going to talk about Santa tonight and I've just gone off in tangents. Good tangents. I was going to talk about how I thought if Santa Claus was real and he wasn't doing the Santa Claus thing, the whole joy to the world and presents to the little snot-nosed brats, <laughs> that he could make a fortune with telemarketing or with Google. Because if he knows what everyone wants, 
You wouldn't need Google. You wouldn't need Siri anymore. You'd just like grab your phone and go, Santa, Corona. <laughs> I love you, Santa. It's just, it makes sense. You imagine if he was working for the telemarketers, you're sitting there for dinner and your phone rings. Not many people have actual phones on the wall anymore, but I do because our house is 20 years old. And the only time it rings is when it's grandma or a telemarketer. So you sort of have to hedge your bet, especially this time of year. If it's grandma, you have to answer it because she, she knows you're a wife, she'll send you money. <laughs> you, have to, you have to confirm your post. Like, yeah, grandma, I love you too. 50 bucks, yes, sweet. That'll buy a carton. Yeah, PA box hasn't changed. Thanks very much. <laughs> but if you answer it, then some, hello, Mr. Stop. Would you like to answer a survey? No, 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 I'm, I'm having dinner. Yeah, you make up some excuse so you don't have to talk to them because no one wants to talk to them. I feel sorry for the poor buggers. They must have the highest suicide rate in any career in the world because everyone's just rude to them. But if Santa was working for the telemarketers, he'd be sitting in the background going, Naughty. He's not eating dinner. I know. <laughs> that didn't work. Okay, second one. Santa could be a judge. He could be like a crime fighter. Right, because he's got this magic list that tells him who's naughty, who's nice, and he also knows where everyone lives because everyone puts Christmas lights on their fucking roofs. <laughs> it's, it's be like if he was in Arkham City, Gotham City, Arkham's the slime. I mean, play too many video games. If he flies into Gotham City, Joker would have Christmas lights, he'd know the Joker's there, he'd know he's bad, and he'd rock up and just stand there. You've been naughty. <laughs> and Batman would rock up. And yeah. <laughs> I was going to go with Bane. Yes, you've been naughty. Don't say that look at me. Say it again. My balls are moist. I have a treat for you. <laughs> Disappointing. I'll put jingle bells in there especially, just so I can jingle them for you and they're fucking not jingling. It's the sweat, ladies and gentlemen. I have these in my fucking pants all night. <laughs> Essence of man, just ring out my fake testicles. Anyway, that bell was for me to get off or was that just telling me to stop the Bane voice? Right, wrap my testicles up? <laughs> I'm Santa and I come from the North Pole. <laughs> I was born in the darkness. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Shippo and all the people in the Shippo for having us this year coming up with us, the, the good and the bad, and uh, all the people who come out and uh, humorous. Hopefully, next year is going to be big. Thank you very much. Yeah.